12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Yo, what up guys? Welcome back. Thanks for watching. Hey, have you subscribed yet? Because I see a lot of you watching and not subscribing. Click that button down below and subscribe. Nah, I'm joking. I'm not gonna force you to. But anyways, I was thinking, what am I gonna make a video about? It's been a busy week. We're actually here doing these given tests. So, you know, we're jumping right into that grind, bruh. But it's been busy. So I've been trying to figure out what to talk about. I made, anyways, long story short, I made a list. I wanted to tell you, like I did a few videos ago, things I hate, but today we're gonna talk about things that are awesome about Vietnam. And one of them is like the sweet workplace. I just had lunch with my boss. She was super friendly, she's super nice. I didn't even wanna go home for the afternoon. Like, and that's sign of a good workplace, isn't it? Like, we're just willing to basically just hang out, you know, and enjoy our time together, so. It's good time, dude. Like the work environment here, overall that is, it's pretty good. Of course you have your stressful situations, but all in all, I'd say it's pretty good time. So yeah, all right, that's point number one. Good work environment here. On to the next one. All right, so speaking about work, one of the best parts is other countries you have to get a job before you come. It's kind of a requirement almost, but here, you can just kind of show up and you'll most likely find work. Now, big, big, huge warning, okay? Not guaranteed. You still need to have qualifications, so, and be a little bit of a risk taker and be willing to kind of run around and try to find something. It's possible, not required to have a job. So, just come here and, you know, see if you can find something. Totally good option. You feeling dizzy yet? Yeah. All right, so the next part, again, work-related, is you have way more vacation days here than you do back at home, especially compared to America, where you have like literally a handful of days. Here you, fair bit, like, they change it a bit this year, but around like the major Vietnamese holidays, we're all given like a package of like four to five days. So we have probably 10 or 12 days spread out throughout the year on long, as well as the Tet vacation, the Tet break is, their Lunar New Year, or we would call it Chinese New Year. Don't call it that here. But yeah, it's Lunar New Year, 10. Where you have another probably 10, 10 days or so, just under two weeks basically, so lots of holiday. And on top of that, as a teacher, if you can find covers and stuff, it's really easy to take extra unpaid time off if you want, which in America is like very difficult, at least it was for me. So getting vacation here is great. Like you can really take a lot of time off and travel and stuff, so. It's awesome. You can work and make a lot of money, or you can travel a lot and spend that money you earned. It's your choice. Both are totally valid options. Next. Okay, it's a very cheap cost of living here compared to back at home. Uh, I mean, you can get really expensive things if you look around and if you wanna live somewhere swanky. Uh, building where I work is actually super swanky as well, so it's totally feasible. Here you can get an apartment for like $1,600 to $2,600 a month totally optional, you know, if you want. Or you can live where we live, and I have my computer down here, by the way, so I'm reading this. Our rent right now is uh, five million. Bing. And five million is this much money, which is $216 last time I checked. Food, on average, Huang and me spend less than five million more on food. So that's another like $216, so you're talking about less than like $230, uh, $400, $30, give or take. So less than $500 a month, basically, for your living. Electricity and stuff, you're talking about a couple, maybe another 100 bucks for all the bills, basically. In general, like, the the pay you get here is amazing. Like, the average person, the average wage here, since I've checked last, was about 6 million VND, which is $260 a month. But uh, we're paid between, um, I'll just find it here. So we're paid about, $1,500 to $2,000 a month, depending on your job. You can make even more if you're really experienced and working a lot, but that's pretty average. The internet will tell you 1,200 to 1,800, that realistically it's more like 1,500 to 2,000, so the internet's a little bit lowballing you, 
Um, also, when you do come here, please keep in mind that, again, I was just Google searching this stuff in general, like what first popped up, just to, something to keep in mind. It says 10 to 16 USD is the hourly rate. It's actually closer, it's actually more than 20 on average if you're good at your job. If you're new, maybe accept it, but usually I wouldn't take a job that's paying you less than like $15 a month, uh, an hour. You should be above that. I mean, I wouldn't take anything less than 20 because I've been doing this for almost four years. But just something to keep in mind, the internet's a little bit lowballing you, okay? So don't, yeah, don't get crazy. Um, but in general, like, you're really not gonna spend a lot of money if you're careful. Now, you can easily waste it. You can go, because you can go to the nightclub and get bottle service. You can get, you know, somebody to drive you around, get a limo if you want. I mean, you can go crazy here. And a lot of people do and really waste a lot of money. So if you're careful and you're smart with your money, you can actually save a lot. So do try to keep a track of your money. On top of cost of living in general, one, more, one last thing about work I wanted to talk about is that make sure you have some kind of four-year degree and a TEFL, a SELT, or some kind of ESL teaching certificate. Uh, the government requires it. Some people do falsify it, but if they were to find out, you could get deported. People do it. You can. I wouldn't. I'm a guy who follows that. When it comes to what the government says, I do it. I don't question it. You'd make your own decisions, all right? But four-year degree and some kind of ESL certification is required. Don't need it. Uh, you can, it's illegal, and usually people pay you less, especially if you're admitting that you don't have it. So, yeah, you want the money? Gotta put in the work, son. Next. All right, next is, in general, the Vietnamese people are awesome. You're gonna have a great time with the people here. They love you. Uh, either they love you for your money, which is not so wholesome, or they love you because you're white and interesting to look at and talk to, and you speak English, and you're different than what they're used to. But either way, people will love to see you. People will be super friendly to you. I've noticed it all over the place. Uh, if you go to the old quarter, watch the video. Uh, I'll link it down below. But you watch that video from the old quarter, and if you go to the old quarter, they're more interested in your money because they know you have it. If you're outside of there, the people are super friendly. Once you leave the big cities and get into the countryside, people are just amazing. Kids gawk at you. People are just like, why is he here? Why is she here? And it's just a great feeling, and the people are super friendly. I love the people here. You know, I've heard a lot of bad stories from other countries where, you know, they're not liked as much, you know. I, I would ask if you do visit, please don't be one of those drunk hooligans. I watched a guy one night poll, I went, actually I went to the old quarter, the one drunk guy pulled a police officer out of his car. And don't be that guy. Don't be a fool. Be smart. Be, remember you represent your country. Be sensible and uh, the Vietnamese people will love you. Remember, like I said before, they do not hate us Americans because of the war, they're over that. So please, we need to mentally get over that as well. Next. All right, next. Your schedule here can be super flexible depending on your availability and willingness to locate and move around. What I mean is, you can do what I do and work for an English center. You have one English center, you go there every day, you designate a time, you work and that's it. I love it, I like a routine, that's the kind of person I am. But you can easily get a job on Mondays working here, Tuesdays over here, Wednesdays here, and you can bend the hours around, pick classes that you like, and work what kind of schedule you want if you're willing to put in the effort. It's not nine to five. You can have all different things. There's teachers who like to work in the morning, so you go to the public schools in the morning to have your afternoons and evenings off. You, you have people like me who like to work the nights, so you have the mornings and afternoons off. And it's really up to you. You have so much freedom in your schedule, and I love that. I love not being tied down by my hours. I have to be here for my certain hours, yes. But outside of that, I have all this freedom, all this time. And that time is incredible. It's actually the one thing that we cannot get back when we give our employer. Okay? So remember that. It's, it's just a little rant I get into from time to time. But like... People can, you can always make more money, but you cannot earn more time. You need to do what you like, you need to enjoy your time, you need to have that time, right? If your life revolves around money and working, then is that, is that, is that who you are? Maybe it is, but oftentimes it's not. It's one of the reasons I'm over here and not really interested in going back to America at the time, because I don't want to work in that grind. I don't like that grind. I'm worth more than just my time to work. And the freedom I have here is really important to me, the actual time freedom, you know? I think it's something we don't think about a lot and maybe something we should keep in mind. Like, time is like, it's our number one enemy. It's one thing that we can't ever get back. 
It's one thing that we can't ever stop from going forward. Rich and poor and everybody all alike ends up in the same place. You know what I'm saying? Am I getting too deep? Is this too philosophical at this point? Time, man. This flexible schedule, the time, it is awesome. Take advantage of it, okay? Bend it to your whim. You're the master of your own destiny here. And I love it. You sound like a mad person. It's serious. Ooh, that free time, baby. Go ahead and do whatever you want. It's epic. All right, next. Yo. This is going back to the point I just made, but one of the most important things and best parts here is you can choose your job. You can choose where you work and what kind of job you want, whether it be public school, private school, international school, depending on your qualifications, of course, but there's a lot of options, you know. Uh, it's all going to be s located and focused around English somehow. You know, I've met people who teach police officers English, people who work in, go around to different businesses and teach their employees English, or people like me who teach children English. It's really up to you. So, you have a lot of freedom and there's a lot of choice and everybody's looking for it. It's hot right now, but this is right now, as of 2019, but eventually it will become saturated like in Korea, in Japan, in Taiwan, but now it was a good time to be here, from what I'm seeing. And some people are actually already having difficulties getting work. Anyways, the second point I wanted to make without doing some crazy cut, because I'm kind of out of silly ideas, but here you get a bike. Technically, like I said before, it's kind of illegal. You don't have a license, yada, yada, yada. But you have that freedom with that bike. I thought I had freedom with a car, right? But you don't, you know? Like, with a car, you have freedom, sure. But you're very restricted because you have to park it somewhere, somewhere specific. You're paying a lot for parking, especially if you're in a big city. Uh, in general, it's a big hulking thing to get around. It's good when you're camping and sure there's benefits, but something about a bike, the breeze in your face, the, the, the twist, you know, you twist the throttle and you go. I don't know, it's very organic. It feels really good. Driving it is fun and it is kind of dangerous. You've seen my time lapses, you've kind of seen the videos. It just looks chaotic, you know, but there's, like I said, there's some kind of freedom to it and the fact that you can just park the bike anywhere you want, you know, you just pull over if you need to check your phone, you park it up on the curb when you go to business and you go to the next one. It's really liberating, you know, like I feel like I hated driving to Philly when I went to school in Philly because parking was such a nightmare. I would actually take the train even though it was more expensive because I hated driving, you know, but here, like, I was scared of biking, and you will be at first, which is, I think, okay, you know, you should be cautious. But you need to get over that. Be safe. Don't drive like a maniac. I have the video, link watch below, I give tips. But the thing is, you really need to be, you really need to try it, because it's what Vietnam is, and it is that freedom, you know? Sure, it's slower than a car, it's a little bit dirtier and grimier than a car, but like I said, man, you're young, you're here, freaking do it, you know? Like I said, just don't be an idiot, but the bike is the ultimate, ultimate freedom you'll have, you know, and I think it is great. So do it, get a bike, try it, you'll love it, be safe. All right, let's get into the parts that I don't like, but I feel like I need to talk about it with the best of. There's always bads, right? I mean, I've talked about a few of them, like the pollution and stuff, right? But there's some other things, they're not really that major, but I just wanted to get into them in one, like, final clip before we end this one, all right? Now, first one is the heat and the rain. Um, I operate, I run, I run hot. I like the cold weather is what I'm saying. Uh, I'm okay with winter. I don't like heat, humidity, rain, and especially, well, especially in the south, it's worse, but here it still gets it, you know. It's, it's a uh, March and uh, it's already like 85 degrees outside. It is nuts. It is uncomfortable and it is humid. They call it Moldy March, which I mentioned before when I was sweating in the one video. But like Moldy March, dude, it is a real thing and it is horrible. It is wet. It is really, really wet. Be ready to deal with it. Why am I out of breath? I'm so excited. Whew. Okay, hot. Especially the further south you go, it's just gonna get hotter and more almost tropical. Especially in Ho Chi Minh, it's really hot. It's a little bit drier though. But do be prepared for tropical or subtropical climate as they would call it. You will experience it, okay? Typhoons and monsoons and stuff are gonna be in the southern half of Vietnam. I've never experienced them up in the north. It does get wet, it does rain. Driving in the rain on a motorbike sucks. I love a motorbike, still get a motorbike. Next, people here are basically chronically late. People don't show up on time, even though they drive like they're like dying. People drive like maniacs and they're always late to their appointments. Be prepared, especially if you're doing a private gig or anything small, that people will show up late. 
it's normal for my students to shop late, not a big deal, but people will be late. You'll meet at 1.30, they'll shop at 2, yada, yada, yada. Just be prepped for it. I'm used to it. I was in Italy, the Italians are famous for being late, and now uh, the Vietnamese are similar. But they're chilled about it, you know. Try not to be late as a foreigner. You know, try again, like I said before, you represent where you're from, and we're known for being punctual, so try to be punctual. I wasn't punctual when I was younger, so I'm trying to fix that by being punctual as an adult. Be punctual. The Vietnamese are not. But it's okay, just be patient, sit down, have a coffee, relax, check your phone, whatever. They'll be there, just wait. Next, this goes both ways. There's corruption, which you've probably known about. It's how the system kind of operates here. It's a big bribe-based system, whatnot. There's a lot of corruption. So it's definitely something to like be aware of and be ready for. Um, if an officer stops you, like I said, you got that coffee money to give them. And uh, when you're filling out some paperwork, sometimes you might have to pay some money for something. So I just do it. If you really are completely against it, I recommend not coming here. But it doesn't affect you at the face. You'll see it sometimes, but if you're a good law-abiding citizen, as most of us are, you really don't see it too much, so it's all right. So you'll hear about it, you know, but it's something you just gotta, it comes with the territory. You know, developing country, it's gonna, it's not gonna be perfect, you know. And um, I always say, like, they have corruption straight up here, and it's the same way that we have our own ways in America, you know, like, hey, I supported your campaign, so why don't you do what I said and help me pass this, you know. It's the same, not same, ours is just a legal form, but I don't really, I don't know, morally and mentally they seem very similar, just that one's legal and one's not, but I still see them both as like shady, you can pay off politicians and police officers, so be prepared for that. Which brings me, speaking of corruption, the management system here is very top down and can also have that influence of corruption where like somebody might know somebody and become a boss, somebody might do somebody some favors and become a boss. Um, I haven't seen it too much, but I've heard a lot about it. It can get really nasty, you know. Uh, you can imagine you have somebody who's just did a favor for somebody, so they're the boss now, they don't have the experience, so it makes your working situation frustrating. Nepotism, stuff like that. There's all different things that you should be prepared for, but don't be, um, if you work in a Western place like me, you know, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna have plenty of times to voice your opinion and say what you feel and people listen, whereas the Vietnamese don't have that option and a lot of Vietnamese managers might not see eye to eye with you and they might be like, why are you saying this? Do you think I don't know what I'm doing? Just something to keep in mind, the management system is very different, okay? Otherwise, I think those are small little things compared to the whole bigger picture, but that's just me. So come over here, check it out for yourself and see what you like and uh, yeah, like I said, Vietnam dude is dope. You know, so check it out. Come here. All right? Thank you.